Before I dive into the world settings, I'd like to discuss a few of the player settings that I think are important to the gameplay and how you experience the game. Now, none of these are game-breaking, but they will help a lot. I'm going to turn motion blur off, and what's really going to make a difference here is field of view. Most people are going to want to turn this to max. It's going to give you more of the player silhouette. See if I apply the changes, you can now see all the way down to my feet instead of just to my waist. Another setting we're going to look at is the mount distance. This is normal here, but if we max that mount distance, we can get a little bit more of a view of our surroundings. The next setting I would change are sound settings. This is something many won't want to touch, but personally, I do enjoy tweaking them a little bit. I like to have voices a little bit louder than sound effects, and you can see there's background music and user interface. Um, the clicking of the user interface can be kind of loud. I'll turn that down as well. I like the ambient noises, so I'll keep those turned up. There are a couple of important settings under the Game Settings tab that we want to look at. Toggling Sprint, you may want to hold it instead of having to remember whether it's toggled. And Aim Sensitivity, that's going to be when we're pressing the trigger on Xbox to aim. The right stick sensitivity is going to be when we're just using the right stick to look around. Uh, so adjusting these, you might want to be careful about turning them up too high. But what I did notice is the default settings seemed kind of low. So this is something I really wanted to do from the beginning. And that just enables me to look left and right and up and down just a little bit faster. And I can aim faster. Most players won't need to change the dead zone settings, but some may need to invert an axis. And just for lols, this is what it looks like if you max out your sensitivity. World settings are going to have a huge impact on your gaming experience. You're going to want to start off on the right foot, but don't worry because you can actually change these settings at any point during your gameplay. As long as you're the playing in single player or the one that owns the multiplayer server. The default settings are not ideal, but we're going to take a look at them. The game is still in early access and you will fall through the floor in some weird lava place. So use no drop for all of these. The casual mode has 1.3 experience gain, the max capture rate of 2, your player does 1.5 damage, and only takes 0.7 damage. You're also getting 2x on item drops and gathering with instant egg hatching. That is compared to normal, which would be the standard experience. All of the settings are set to 1 with a 2 hour massive egg. Finally. The hard setting is more death and more grind. You're only getting 0.8 experience, 0.8 capture rate, you're only doing 0.5 damage, and you're taking four times. Item drop and resource gathering is also 0.5, and you're getting a four hour massive egg. This mode is also the most unforgiving on death, which forces you to drop all of your items and all of the pals on your team. Let's take a look at each of these settings and consider some optional changes and some use cases as to why we would want to do that. The first one being daytime speed. Shorter days would mean more sleep for the pals in the base and more sanity recovery. You could also avoid the heat, like you could avoid the cold with shorter nights, or just have it easier to see. Boost experience rate at endgame when breeding to get some of those level 1s caught up. To avoid a bug with the lift monk effigies actually decreasing your catch rate, you could manually increase it here in the settings. Pal appearance rate changes the size of mobs, not the amount of mobs. So if you see one chickpea spawn, it'd actually be like 2 or 3 deep now. This also applies to bosses, so if you're playing multiplayer and you and your friend can both get a boss and have a chance to catch it, you could also make the pals weaker to account for there being more of them but that would also make your pals weaker. We're gonna to get to that next. 
more enemies means more souls, more item drops, but there's going to be a performance implication. The damage to and from pals applies to all pals. That's friendly and foes, so it's kind of self-balancing. You could make your pals hit harder, but wild pals hit harder, and you could make wild pals weaker, but you're going to make your own pals weaker too. This setting may be useful for a more player-centric or no-pal type of run. In general, the pals are way stronger than the player, so if you weaken them all, you could minimize that gap. Don't minimize pal hunger because you actually want them to eat food so that they can recover sanity. You could minimize the pal stamina reduction rate so that your mounts could run or fly forever, and that could be really convenient. The pal auto and sleep health regeneration, you could make either easier or harder, but leaving them at the normal setting is probably what most people will do. Damage to and from player are the fundamental combat settings that you would want to change to make things easier or harder. You could also make the survival more difficult or easier by making yourself hungry more often or less often. And from an exploratory point of view and combat, you could give yourself more stamina to make some of that easier. The player health regeneration is kind of slow by default, so I could understand maybe boosting that a little bit. I like playing it on normal settings, but the sleep regeneration, those normal settings should be fine. Structure deterioration is just garbage collection for multiplayer servers. If you're single player, then you really won't have a problem then turning the deterioration to zero so that everything that's created in the game stays. You could also minimize the damage to structures to avoid losing your build. You should know by now that wood burns, and if you've caught anything on fire, you can actually delete that piece to stop the spread if you're fast enough. If you're having a performance issue, you could decrease max dropped items. You could change item drops and harvest rates to make some of the grind either harder or easier. Lower the respawn interval to make nodes respawn faster. I would leave gatherable object health alone. It's kind of weird. If you increase it, then it's going to be beneficial for getting more lumber out of a tree. But if you decrease it, that's kind of more optimal for getting ore nodes because giving them more health doesn't give you more ore. Many people prefer instant egg hatching, but I like to leave it on the minimum value so that there's at least some type of weight. I think a lot of people toggle raids on and off depending on their mood. They're not really that difficult and they can actually be a good source of farming ammunition and even some uncommon pals. They can be annoying and pretty inconvenient if you're in the middle of like a base rebuild or something like that. So if you're not being super competitive, you might want to just turn them off for a moment. Given that the game is still in early access and is unstable, I would advise just using no drops, but that's up to you. The guild setting doesn't seem important right now, but it could become more important in the future. And finally, one of the best settings, especially for a single player playthrough, is to enable all 20 of your pals to be able to work at a base. Normally this stops at 15. As far as my personal settings, I like to play with the harder player damage settings enabled but the normal item drops and gathering material settings. So that's kind of less of a time grind for resources, but still a skillful, difficult playthrough for combat. I spend a lot of time on builds, so I have most of the settings for deterioration all the way down. But in my normal game, I leave the damage from like raiding normal for an authentic experience. And I toggle raids depending on my mood. Alternatively, you could take a more god mode or creative mode approach to the game, which a lot of content creators would do. Shorter or longer nights, depending on whether or not you're looking for the night pals. Maximum experience and pal capture rates for easy mode. Minimizing the pal stamina reduction rate so that we can travel for very long distances. A small boost to the player attack damage because we don't want to do so much damage that we insta-kill all the pals, we do want to be able to catch them. On the other hand, the player will take minimal damage and won't get hungry or tired. Maximum health regeneration just because, and no damage to the structures because, yeah, we want to keep them too, it's probably creative mode. Let's boost the item drop rate and gather rate 
and also shorten the gather respawn interval. Instant egg hatching to save time and raids depending on our mood. No drops, of course. 20 pals and that's it. Using these settings, you'll only want to level up your carry weight on character level up. And don't worry, you can respec later. But most everything else can be adjusted through the settings.